it's Vanessa here from Love Riley. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making the Bee Hip Bag by Sophisticated Craft Designs. I must admit when I saw this pattern I was like oh I don't really know if I'm going to like it because it's not personally something that I would use but if your customers absolutely love hip bags, bum bags, they're going to love this and you could also wear it over your shoulder you don't have to wear it on your hip so there's also that option. Now I have to talk about the instructions that were given with this pattern they were so very well written I didn't have any problems at all me and all my wisdom decided oh I know what I'm doing I'll go ahead and do what I think I was meant to do and ended up having to unpick a bunch of stuff but that was all on me but if you follow the pattern directly as it's written you'll be fine. Let's talk about materials. So I've used waterproof canvas for my main exterior. I've used animal swirl vinyl for my side pieces and my wings. Everything here is from Mir Zen. I use their honey waterproof canvas, but I use, I think it's 600 denier is the one that I used, but it was really thick and I would not do that again. So if you are sewing this on a domestic machine, it is possible, however, keep your materials light. If you don't, you're going to struggle and you're probably going to give up and throw it in the bin and I don't want that for you. So keep your materials light because it, it does get quite thick where the two seams at the bottom meet. So keep that in mind. I'm really impressed with how this turned out. Um, I was sceptical, but like I said, I was really impressed. So let's go over the features so in the pattern there are quite a few different options i chose the medium size with the connectors that attach to your wings i did the double zipper pocket and on the inside you'll see shortly what i chose but there's quite a few different options it's kind of like write your own adventure so let's go over the bag so on the front we have our front zipper pocket it's a really good size And I will put some photos at the end of how I photograph this for the website. Here is our main zipper top, which opens up to this amazingness. Now, as you can see, it is finished with binding. If you don't like binding, well, sorry. <laughs> oh, I love this. So we've got our six card slots here on the back. We've got our slip pocket here. We've got another big zipper pocket at the back. And then on the opposite wall, we have three slip pockets here. And then if that wasn't enough, because you can never have too many pockets, right? We've got another zipper pocket, big zipper pocket on the back, which takes up this whole area. And then we've got the base. I used webbing with an adjustable slider as per the pattern for my strap. So let's get on and make the bee hip bag by Sophisticated Craft Designs and I'll see you all soon. Bye. I'll start with all my exterior pattern pieces. So this is waterproof canvas that I got from Mir Zen. So I have piece B, which is my exterior flap. One of those, Decaville Light. I also have a base, Decaville Light. It'll tell you in the pattern where to place this. I have a zipper pocket front panel, piece AB. I've got one of those and that's not interfaced with anything. I've got my back panel D, one of those Decaville light. Again, the pattern will show you where to place that. So one of those. Then I have a front panel zipper pocket and this is piece AB2. I've got one of those and it's not interfaced. So they're all my waterproof canvas main exterior pieces. Piece C exterior, two side wings, and these are cut on the fold. I already have the left and the right already marked, two of those. Then I have my side connector tabs, piece S2 and pattern piece F. One of those and not interfaced with anything. I've got my front panel zipper pocket side panel, piece AB4. I've got two exterior out of those and I've not interfaced those with anything. 
Okay, we'll move on to all of our lining pieces. This is waterproof canvas from Mia Zen. I've not interfaced these bits with anything. This is the really thick stuff. Interior panel, side panel lining, two of those. This is pattern piece E4. I've got pattern piece C1, which are my side wing linings. I've got four of these, two left and two right. The pattern piece will tell you how to cut those out. I've got my back panel lining, pattern piece D1. I've got one of those, but I've noticed that it says cut two. Hmm. Okay, I'll double check that. If I need to cut another one, I will. But if not, I've got one. D1. Pattern piece B1 is my flap lining. One of those. Pattern piece BB1, which is my base lining. One of those. I'm not doing a mesh pocket. I'm just going to do a slip pocket. So I've used the mesh pocket pattern piece. And I've just cut two pieces. And I'll make a slip pocket out of that. So that's pattern piece A3 that I used. Got a front panel zipper pocket lining. That's AB3, one of those. I've got a front panel zipper pocket lining, AB1, one of those. I've got my front pocket zipper pocket lining, A1, one of those. I've got an interior panel lining, piece E, one of those. I've got an interior panel zipper pocket lining piece E1 one of those I've got my card slot pocket lining E3 I've got one of these so one of those I also have a piece of Decaville light this is my front panel main stabilizer zipper pocket piece A2 and I've got one of those I've got four zippers and I've cut those to the measurements that are given in the pattern all of your pattern pieces may change and it all depends on what version of this bag you are doing. So I've got Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. So I've got those all prepped and I have ironed those as well. I'm just using one inch webbing for my strap and I've cut that to the measurement as per the pattern. I'm using fold over elastic for my binding on this bag. So I've got that. I've not cut that as yet, but I've got that ready. Hardware, there's hardly any, which I like. <laughs> We've got two swivel clasps. I've got two D rings and I've got a swivel. I've got a slide adjuster, a wide mouse slide adjuster. This is all one inch and this is for the strap. And then I have four zipper. I've got four zipper to pulls number five. So I'm just using all these heart ones. And my bag tag that I'm using is this hatched tag that I got from Brimax. And it's got like a hatched pattern in the back. So this will be the first time that I'm trying these. And I've got one of those. And that's it. If I have forgotten anything, I will leave a note on the screen. But apart from that, let's get started. I'm using a size 19 needle and I'm using black number 20 thread from ProSew. So the one that I'm doing is a medium size with the zipper pocket, the card slots and the slip pocket on the inside with the side connectors. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is install my name plate. Now it doesn't give you a specific measurement in the pattern of where to put this, but it does tell you where to keep it out of your seams or how far from the edges to place it so that it's out of your seams. So I'm just going to go ahead and find the centre. I'll find the centre of the top and the bottom. I'm just going to use my air erasing pen that I got from Brimax. going to find the center this way as well so I've just marked the centers there okay I'm going to add some double-sided tape on the back of it
and I'm just going to pop that in the middle right there and I'm just going to use black rivets so I'm just going to use my pen just to mark the hole placement so I can come in and punch my holes and I am going to back this with Decaville light as well so I'm just going to take that off I'll mark it on here as well and I can punch the holes back on and I'm going to put the post through the back there there we go I'm just worried now that these posts are too big but fingers crossed I'm scared I'm going to break it This side does not seem to have gone down as much as this one, so I might try it again. Ah, oh, there we go. So I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to snap the nameplate. Oh, there we go. That looks amazing. That looks amazing. Okay, that bit's done. Let's see what the next step is. Okay, so if you're like me and you're doing the front zipper pocket, we're going to need quite a few pieces. So we're going to need piece AB, AB1, which is here, AB2, which is this, AB3, AB4, A2, which is our front pocket stabilizer, which is A2. You want the zipper Z2 and you want a zipper pull. So the first thing that we want to do is install our zipper pull. Next, we want AB1, which is our front panel zipper pocket lining and we're going to place that right sides up so go ahead and find the center of everything and just make sure that if you do cut your zipper tape with scissors just to heat seal the notches so that you don't fray your zipper tape. I'm going to find the center of the zipper panel. Okay, so we're going to line that up in the center and we're going to base that on. Make sure you've got right sides up of your your zipper pocket and make sure that you got your right sides up on your zipper tape and you can go ahead and base that on and I'm just basting it on at an eighth of an inch from the top edge okay then we want our main piece and we want to do place that right sides together and we're going to sew that together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Oh, look, that got stuck on my nail. <laughs> oh, goodness. And again, 
seam allowance is given in the pattern. I'm going to move my zipper pull out of the way, but what, whatever you do, make sure you don't take it off the edge. Now it does tell you that you can come in and you can trim down your seam allowances in the corner but do not trim your zipper tape. Okay then we're going to fold our seam back and we are going to top stitch so I am going to clip this together as I do this so that it's even. And then we will sew this together so it's one panel anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch it and then we're going to sew it all together so then it becomes one piece. So I'm going to go up to a top stitch length. I'm just using four and a half. And I'm going to top stitch this top edge. And then rather than coming off the edge, I'm just going to come down and baste all of these sides together. Now I am going to just back stitch over my zipper tape because then my zipper pull's not going to come off. And then we can do that all the way up and our zipper pull's not going to come off. And then we can trim off any excess zipper tape that we've got. Just remember to heat seal your edges again to prevent fraying. Sorry if you can hear music in the background. The neighbours across the road think it's a great time for a party. Okay, so that is our front panel and then that's on the wrong side okay then you're going to get your front panel zipper pocket exterior piece a b2 and we're going to put that right sides together with the top edge of our zipper tape find your centers okay so we're going to place these right sides together and we're going to sew this on using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Okay, and you can go ahead and trim your seam allowance down just as we did before. Again, making sure not to cut through the zipper tape. Okay, then we've got AB3, which is our zipper pocket lining. And you wanna align it right sides up and right sides up of your front piece. We're going to ensure that they're lined up. I'm going to clip these together. And I'm making sure that the seam for the top band that we sewed here is pointing up towards the raw edge, just like so. Then what we're going to do, these are right sides together, just like so, is we're going to sew top stitch this edge that we just sewed here. And then we're going to base the whole thing together. So what you can do is you can just 
leave your needle in and just sew around the outside again. And then over the zipper teeth and then we're going to sew this edge together so it's going to be a raw edge up the top here and then back down and they should be the same size as each other if they're not you may need to trim some stuff down And then that's what we have. So when you open this, you're looking at it right sides. Then you want to get your front panel zipper pocket sides and you want to place those right sides together. And again, it should all line up. I'm going to clip this into place. Okay, we're going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now just make sure when you sew, when you sew this part up that your zipper pull is not in your seam or you're going to break a needle. Now, if you are on a domestic and you're worried about keeping your seams as bulk free as possible, you can come in and just trim away this, your exterior only. Next, we're going to flip these open. Our seam is going out towards the side and we're going to top stitch through that. This would also be a good place to put a woven label if you've got one. Okay, now that that's complete, now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and apply your stabilizer as per the pattern. So you want your front panel stabilizer and you're going to go ahead and place that as per the pattern. If you don't have one of these wool mats, they are amazing, as well as these little mini irons. Okay, so that is now our front piece. So we can set that to the side okay because i'm not doing the mesh pocket what i'm going to do is i'm going to do my slip pocket so i'm just going to place these right sides together and again i use the mesh pocket measurements given in the pattern i'm just sewing these together And I'm going to fold these out and I'm going to top stitch. I just want to get a really good crease on this because it is so thick. So I'm just going to top stitch that an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now 
while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and baste these two layers together as well. I could have waited until it was on my lining, but oh well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure in. It gives you a measurement on the pattern piece of where you would put your mesh pocket. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure that. On each side. I'm going to get my front panel zipper pocket A1 lining. I'm going to find the centers. I'm going to find the center of my slip pocket. If you are going to do this the same way as me, just be very mindful that this also gets bound so it's going to be thick, especially if you're using really thick waterproof canvas. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and base that on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm going to sew on either side of these and I'm going to backstitch very well at the top. You could also add a, add a rivet just because these will be stress points. So I'm just going to come, I'm just going to sew an eighth of an inch from that edge Stitch twice I'm going to come across one and then back down the other side and I've back stitched again and then you can continue to the next line And then we can base the rest of the bottom and up the side. And there we have a slip pocket. So there we have our three individual pockets. Love it. Next you want Z1 zipper. zipper pull you want your full panel exterior you want your lining I apologize I wasn't recording in the last step oh, far out so all I did was I took my Z1 zipper tape I put it wrong right sides up on the zipper on the zipper panel just like that so we'll say that that's the top edge and I basted it on and then I sandwiched my front zipper panel 
in between so it was a zipper sandwich so it was like this so that's my lining and the zipper tape was right sides together with my front zipper pocket uh, with my exterior panel piece and then I sewed that on at the seam allowance given in the pattern now we're going to flip that up and we're going to top stitch but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of these together because I'm pretty sure that what we do is we do what we did in the last step and we base this all as one piece so okay so yes we are we're going to top stitch these and then base these together my exteriors side panels have just stretched a little bit I didn't interface those but that's okay because I can trim those down as I need to so I'm just going to clip this first before I top stitch it'll help keep everything together and then what I'll do is when I do want to baste when I do want to baste this together after this next step I'll do it from the lining side so top stitching this So that's top stitched now so then I want to come in and I want to baste around the lining around all of it don't go over your zipper pull yet your zipper tape because you've not put your pull on just going to trim down my excess before I move on I'm going to trim the excess on the sides but I'm not trimming the zipper tape yet I can do that at another step Actually, I think I will. I think I'll just trim it all down. It's just going to make it easier. So this is the first time that I have used the Animal Swirl Vinyl from Mears In. So I just know next time to interface it. But it's no big deal. It's not a major part of the bag. okay okay then what we're going to do is we're going to sit that to the side and we're going to move on to the flap so this is what we have so far it's our completed zipper pocket at the front and then I guess our flap goes there and it'll end up going around like that oh, those will be cute okay so you want all the flap pieces you want your flap exterior, your flap lining. Okay, now on your front, if you didn't clip the center, what you need to do is you need to mark it. You need to mark it. Now, if you've also got an overhang of zipper tape, what you also need to do is mark where the edges line up. I don't think I should have trimmed mine, but it is what it is. Because now what we want to do is we want to separate this so this is now what we have our flap lining you want to go ahead and you want to mark the center so 
so this is what you've got mark the center at the bottom and the top okay now what we want to do is we want to put these right sides up so start in the center and start clipping it around as you go you're going to clip it all the way to the end now if you didn't trim your zipper tape like me then you'll probably have excess whereas I don't because I'm silly and trimmed it down but that's okay So you want to go ahead and you want to work this zipper into the curve the best you can and you didn't I do not want to trim notches into my zipper tape I want to try and avoid that at all costs but just hold it like a 3d object that it is And if it helps to fold your tape upwards in your back piece upwards, do whatever works for you. But it's going on fairly simply. And you want to do that all the way around. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste this in place. I'm guessing we then add the top and sew it down on the seam allowance, but we'll get to that step in a minute. You can also use a stiletto to hold your zipper tape as you sew it on, or a screwdriver, whatever works for you. But you don't want to stretch your zipper tape if you can help it because it'll give you puckers or a wavy zip and we really don't want that okay there we go now I'm going to sew this right sides up I'm going to hopefully use my screwdriver to help me I'm basting this on at an eighth of an inch and I'm flattening the zip as I go just go slow oh did it not too bad then you want to get your flap exterior. Now, I should not have put my interfacing on prior to this step, but I did. So it will be what it will be. And then find the center of the top and bottom. And we're going to put these right sides together with our zipper in the middle. And we're going to clip all that together. just make sure that as you're clipping your zipper is pushed out of the way your zipper teeth so go ahead so go ahead and clip all that together it looks like a taco doesn't it <laughs> okay and then we're going to sew that together with the seam allowance given in the pattern
and then it does tell you to trim down your seams with pinking shears now what do not trim through your zipper so you just want to come in with your pinking shears and you can trim it just make sure that your zipper is out of the way so if you need to pull this back as you go around and you can trim both the lining and the exterior I mean it's not a very big seam allowance but I'm not going to bother with it because it's not a huge seam allowance so then we're going to turn it right sides out if you haven't put your stabilizer on you do it before this step oh no I've got a pucker there right there okay so I'm going to turn it back inside out because I cannot leave it like that and I'm going to have to come in and take out a couple of stitches so it's probably a good idea if you are using pinking shears just to check that you have no puckers before you go ahead and trim down any seam allowance. Okay, now I can make sure that that's smooth. And I'm going to come in and sew that again. So I'm just going to start a couple of stitches back from where I was. From where I unpicked. To lock in those stitches and then come around again that should be good try that now ah 100% better okay and then we are top stitching so I'm just going to join these together so that they stay even and you want to go ahead and top stitch around here roll your seams so that you can get them as flat as possible and top stitch an eighth of an inch from that edge I've already top stitched. Oh, I should have found that before. So far, though, top stitching is looking great. Just right here oh, there we go I can see it there so I'm just going to take out a couple of stitches I want to make sure that it's as flat as I can get it I don't want any more puckers there and I'm going to have to be really careful because it's right where I finished top stitching
so again coming back a couple of stitches back from where I finished and back stitch to lock that in and let's see how that it rolls ah oh, much better Puckers be gone. And then I can finish top stitching. And luckily I stopped. I didn't mean to. I stopped right where a black part is. So you won't even see this back stitching. And we want to base the top. And there we have it. I mean, you can see it on the inside of the flap, but look at that. Lovely. Okay, now our flap's done, put it aside. Now you want your base pieces. Okay, so take both your base pieces. And you're going to place them wrong sides together and we're going to clip them together and then baste around the whole lot to create one piece and then this gets finished with binding because I didn't even catch it. I'm having a shocker today. I'm just going to do another lot of stitching. Much better. Then we're going to find the center. Bring your exterior back. You're going to match up the centers. And you're going to do a couple of clips on either side and then out to your sides. just like so and then come to your side and curve it and join those sides together just like so and then start clipping it oh that fits perfectly and this does get finished with binding this is quite thick so if you're on if you're on a domestic, keep your lining very light and your exterior very light. This is the really thick waterproof canvas that I've used. I feel like we're getting there. You possibly could staple that if you needed to. Okay, and we're going to base that into place. This is really thick for me. So I'm just making sure that all of the layers stay together and as flat as possible. Because we don't want puckers. Oh, thank you for your service.
Okay, done. Now what you want to do is you want to turn it out to see, make sure that you're happy. There's no puckers before we baste, uh, before we do our binding. sitting up already and that's going to be the inside she had a little bit fancy oh, love it okay now we're going to put the binding on I'm just using double-sided fold over elastic going to start clipping it just double check on both sides that I'm getting it I was thinking for a while there oh just to make it all match I'll um use waterproof canvas for my seam uh, for my binding as well i'm so glad i didn't because this is really thick so i'm just slightly pulling that stretching it and then coming in just to make sure that it's even on both sides Now we're going to sew that on with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'm just trying to turn it as I go. Make sure I'm going to come in and make sure I caught both edges. Yes. Okay, and then we can turn that right sides out and see how that looks. You can trim off the excess. Okay, I can see a couple of my basting stitches. So I'm just going to come in just a little bit more than what I did. And I'll do a second row. Just a little bit.
see how that went. Still caught it on both sides. Go me. Oh, much better. Yes, now I cannot see any of them. Oh, looks fantastic. Then this is the inside. Okay, so now it's saying that we get, we put our flap on our top zipper, zip it up and then that should be it. So go ahead and install your zipper pull. Now this would have been a lot easier if unlike me you kept longer tails. But we should know by now that I don't do things the easy way. I do them the Vanessa way. The hard way. Oh, looks good. Oh, may have gotten it. Oh no. Mm. No. Can I? Oh, I didn't. I got it. Okay, so I've taken my zip completely off and now I'm going to reinstall it because I want this to be closed at both ends. There. Okay, so that's it. It's on. And I think what I'm going to do is just turn this out gently. And I'm going to baste just along the zipper because I don't want this zipper end to come undone. to stay together. So that's one side done. Now my zipper tape, my zipper pull is not going to come off. Hopefully that's good. Just heat seal these ends. And then I can gently turn it back right sides out. done now wait there's your bag yay <laughs> <laughs> oh dear okay next we want our completed front zipper pocket and you want your side wings one exterior and one lining just like so okay this is what it shows and then there's a mark that we have to make on the inside of our flap so we're going to start the flap piece here where that mark is and we're going to clip that all along here just like that and then that'll go out okay so what we're going to do is we're going to base that on but we're going to stop at the point where our um, fold over elastic is So that's what I've done. I've sewn it at that mark that we marked earlier 
and I stopped when I got to my fold over elastic. So we're going to repeat that for the other side. So our curved bit should be pointing on the far inside. So this time I'm going to sew from the bottom up and I'm going to start where the bottom of that fold over elastic is. And I'm just basting that on. Just make sure your zipper pull's not in your way. So that's what it's going to look like. Okay, now we're doing the outside. So mark the same point up here on your top zipper flap. Have that right sides together just like so. I'm going to clip that into place and we are going to sew this at the seam allowance in the pattern and we're still going to stop where that bias tape is. So it might be easier for you to sew it. I think I might sew it from the lining from this side. Yeah going to be easier for me to sew it through the side that we've already basted on. And again, make sure that your zipper pulls are out of the way. And then we're going to repeat for the other side. Hmm. So then when they're together, that's what they're going to look like. Okay, so repeat that for the same, or for the opposite side. Okay, and again I'm going to sew it from the lining side. It's just easier because you can see the stitches that you've already sewn. And again, sewing that at the seam allowance given in the pattern. Okay, that wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. Now it says that we can clip off our overhang, but we're going to pull these right sides together and they're going to get top stitched. So I'm just going to go ahead and line them up. So we're going to top stitch, but we're also going to sew these two together. So I'm just going to trim them off. Okay, I might just do these together first and then I can fold it out to top stitch. It might be easier. Okay, trim off these parts. So now what I'm going to do is just turn it inside out because I think it's going to be easier to top stitch it this way. this together. Okay, 
same thing. So that's one side done. And then I'm going to repeat for the same, for the opposite side. Sorry if you can't see, I'm just trying to get it done the easiest possible way. done. I'll turn it out and see what it looks like from the outside. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. We can set that to the side. Now we're on to our back. So we need our back panel exterior, a back panel pocket lining, back panel stabilizer and our zipper pull. Okay so we want our D1 piece which is our lining you want to put your zipper pull on okay you want to take your lining and you want it right sides up and you're going to base that on eighth of an inch now you want your back panel okay I'm going to mark the centers I'm going to clip the center and I'm going to clip the center of this now it's going to be right sides together so I'm just going to clip that now there's a mark that you need to mark and these are your start and stop stitches. So we've got right sides together. We've marked our start and our stop. And we're going to go ahead and clip that together and then we're going to sew this onto our back piece. Again, we're going to start and stop at those marks. Seam allowance in the pattern. Be mindful of where your zipper pull is. Move your zipper pull out of the way, but be careful you don't want it to come off. And remember to stop the stitches where we mark. Just like so. Okay, it says then to cut into the zipper box, but do not cut any stitches that we've made. So I've just cut through my zipper tape, so... Okay, we're going to fold this back. And these bits that we marked earlier, they're going to create the top seam. So we're going to push this all the way to the back and fold it down. And then we're going to clip this together. And then those sides become your side seams. Okay, so you want to make sure that your zipper is closing in the same direction it's going to be on the back so then they all close over to the left so then what we want to do is once we've done that we're going to come in and we're going to sew 
these edges here, these here, we're going to sew that down to create the edge. So that's what we've created. So we've gone ahead and we've sewn that down. So we want to do the same for the other side. So now what we want to do is we want to come and we want to stitch just like we would a zipper panel. We want to go down, across and then back up the other side. So it's up to you what side you start from. But we are top stitching that lining down as well. So make sure everything's flat. the other side that's completed so that's what it looks like that's what it looks like on the back next you want to get your other lining piece and you want to clip it right sides together now this time when we sew this on we're going to baste it on to the top of the zipper panel to the top of the zipper but we're only going to sew on the zipper, not in, not outside of that. So we're only sewing on the zipper tape. So then this is what it's going to look like on the back. Okay, then we want to trim the bottom so that they're in the same size. Then you want to clip those together. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to sew these together. Actually, trim them so they're both the same. And then we're going to sew them together with the stitch, with the seam allowance in the pattern. And we are stitching the bottom as well. We're not leaving the bottom open. So we're going to come in and stitch this down. sides and we can catch those bits tabs that we left earlier so now we have a completed zipper pocket okay you want to lift this up and adhere your stabilizer if you haven't already done that now we're onto our interior zip out onto our interior when I went through the pattern pieces, I was going to use this really thin waterproof canvas. I changed my mind. I just wanted something to resemble the out, the exterior on the inside. So I decided I'm going to do my card slots out of this. Now on your pattern piece, which I'm not going to show because there's measurements on there, it'll give you marks to make on your pattern piece. So the first thing that you want to do is mark the top. So I'm going to write top up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer all the marks as per the pattern and then we'll be back. So this is the bottom. With our bottom it says fold it wrong sides up in line to number three. Just like that. Okay, and press that. 
just like so. Then this line here, we're going to fold that and we're going to line that up with number two. Just like so. Then the next line, we're going to line it up with number one. Just like so. And that will create our pockets. Just like so. So I just lifted that bottom line up and lined it up under number three. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and clip it because I am going to top stitch these. All right, so what you can do is just grab a card and just make sure that when you put your card in, that all of your holes, that all of your slots are correct and your card's not gonna fall through. So once you're happy with that, we can go ahead and top stitch each of these. So I'm just top stitching that folded edge. And then I'll put it back into place and clip it back on. And then come along and do the second one. Go ahead and fold that back up into place and clip that one. And then the last one. And there we have it. Just double check that your measurements are correct as to what they're meant to be in the pattern so it ends up being a certain height. And then once you're happy with that, I'm going to baste the sides and I am going to back stitch just over the sides over the top edges of those card slots just going to make it easier to deal with one piece rather than having all of your layers moving Now we're going to divide these in half. So find your centers. And what it tells us to do is to sew an eighth of an inch on each side of that center point that we just marked. And you want to back stitch well over the pocket seams. So you can just go across one stitch and then back down the other side. Again, making sure to back stitch well. Next you want to get your side panel lining. What I'm going to do is just find the centre of this. I'm just going to mark my center. Because there are quite a few layers there. And I'm going to match up those centers. And clip this right sides together. Stitch 
stitching that at the seam allowance given in the pattern. And we are going to top stitch this as well. Okay, we're folding this out. My seam is pointing to the outside and I'm top stitching. Same on the other side, seams pointing out and we're top stitching. Done. We want pattern piece E1 and there's a zipper box that we want to place on the back. So go ahead and transfer that if you haven't already. Let's put our zipper pull on first, shall we? That's correct. Now you want piece E, which is our interior panel lining. And you want to match that up, right sides together. And you want to clip that into place. So what we then want to do is we want to come in and we want to sew this box, but we're only sewing on the top and the bottom. We are not sewing the sides. And it does tell us in the pattern to use a shorter stitch length than two and a half to avoid any puckers. top sewn and then we're going to sew the bottom line as well. Okay. Remove your clips. Then what we need to do is fold this in half just like so. We're going to snip in the center. What I'm going to do is about half an inch before I get to the edge, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a V. I'm not going to sew, I'm not going to cut through the stitches that I just made. I just want to come up to them. And the longer the V you leave, the easier it is to get caught when we go to sew it up and it has less chance of your zipper, zipper coming back through. So just do that on both edges, sides. Then what we're going to do is we're going to push this up and put it through to the back. If you have used cotton, you can go ahead and you can press the seam on this to get it as flat as possible. I have not, so I'm just going to have to make do with finger pressing it. But this is, this is what we have. You can go ahead and use a roller if you have one. Now, with my zipper, what I wanna do is I wanna put an eighth of an inch double-sided tape along each edge. Then what we want to do is I want my zipper closing to the left and we're going to go ahead and we're going to place this inside this box that we've made. Now you want to go ahead and make sure that you've got it centered. And then when you're happy that you've got it centered where you want it, you can remove the bottom like the bottom backing of the double-sided tape and it doesn't want to work for me of course it doesn't it's sticking to me not the zipper tape <laughs> okay so go ahead and stick that down I'm happy with that now now I can come in and remove the top 
let's see if it wants to work here. I doubt it, but we'll give it a go. Yep. Okay, you don't have to work there, but you do have to work here. Now I can go ahead and line this up. Now that that's done, I can sew an eighth of an inch around the outside. Now because I am using black thread, I am going to leave long tails and pull my threads through. now that I'm here I can come and pull my threads through to the back so they're ready for me to tie them off. I'm just going to do it a knot while I'm here. I tend to knot it three times and then I can cut the extra threads off at the end. Okay. And then I can continue. tails and then pull those through to the back and I'm going to knot all of those together and then I will use you can use fray check to secure that or you can use a heat a lighter to heat seal those my zipper pocket and then we can pull our lining piece up to the top and match it up here and clip it together then what we can do is we can come in and we're going to sew now what I do want to do is it's going to be quite a big seam allowance because I want to come in and I want to catch those V's that we sewed earlier or that we cut out earlier because if you sew those it avoids the zipper pulling back through potentially and we don't need to sew you we just need to sew the sides because the bottom's already closed fold the side in and again from the bottom we're going to go up and I'm going to come in to make sure that I get those V's and then I'm going to fold down the top and we're going to sew across the top And we can go ahead and trim this down. And then we have a completed zipper pocket that's completely sewn up. 
and you can come in and trim your sides as well. You don't potentially need that in your seams. But if you do cut your zipper tape, just make sure to reseal it. So I've got the top of my card slots facing down with the bottom of our lining. Make sure that your zipper pocket, which should be out of the way, and we're going to sew that at the seam allowance given in the pattern. folded down and top stitched is that then gets bought up Sit up here to create a slip pocket there and our zipper pocket at the back is that correct and it says to ensure that this is the same height as our back panel so up just a little bit more So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip it to the back panel and then I can make sure that it's the correct height and then I can clip it. So now I know that it's correct and I can clip it some more. So then we've got a big slip pocket, a zipper pocket and card slots. How fancy is that? Then you want your slip pocket sides, right sides together. And again, it says that we will have an overhang, but that's fine. So we're going to sew this at the seam allowance given in the pattern. We're going to open and top stitch. So our curvy corners go towards the inside. Seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure your zipper is out of the way. I feel like we're getting there. We're opening seam allowance is going out towards the side so under our side panel and we're going to top stitch oh this would be a place good place for a sewing label as well can trim off any overhang okay next you want to get your both your back panels and you're going to align these wrong sides together and we're going to baste around the perimeter of these I'm going to baste it from my exterior side
watch out for zipper pulls. So then this is what I have. And I'm just going to trim this down. So it all matches. Now I want to get my side connector. Put your mark down the centre, double sided tape. We're going to fold both ends in to meet each other. We do not need to leave a gap in the middle. And I will top stitch this. We want to trim, cut that in half. And you want your D-rings. And the seam of your D-ring will go towards the seam of your connector. And I'm just going to base that on. Base that together. Now in the pattern, on the pattern piece, it does give you measurements, markings of where these get placed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put those D-rings where it states in the pattern. And I'm just going to base those on. They do go up at an angle. And then the same on this side. Now we want our front and our back panel. Okay, we want to do this right sides together. And you want to start in the centers. center of the top and the bottom and you're going to fit it all together Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to base this into place. Pushing it out of the way. This is going to be really thick here because of the binding that we used earlier. here too.
maybe don't use waterproof canvas for your lining. Well, not the thick one anyway. going to have a look at what it looks like on the inside there's some places that didn't get basted together so I'm going to come back in and do those Okay, other than that it looks okay. What I will do is I do want to come back in at the top and I do want to make sure to get my zipper. So I just want to sew. that I cannot see any basting stitches. Okay, now try that. Much better. Okay, now we've got to bind it. I'm going to trim those down. This is really thick. Oh dear, I'm regretting my choices. It's too late now. My binding I'll sew on at my full seam allowance. I just want to maybe do it from this side. I just want to make sure that I'm going to get both sides. Now you will have to use a hump jumper or something like that to get over this seam where your two bits of binding mat meet. But I've just got this to do. Then we've got, I've just got to do the strap and then it's finished. Okay, here we go. I'm going to sew it from, I think I'm going to sew it from the lining side. And I'm doing it at my full seam allowance as per the pattern. Now you want to make sure that everything is pushed out of your way. And go as slow as you need to. to be really thick here I'm going to try this hump jumper I 
I just want to keep it there because it is so thick here. But we made it over there. Just be mindful of where your zippers are. And this is where my D rings are. So again, be mindful because there's not much gap. Now here it is going to be so thick because I've got both layers of binding. I'm going to use the hump jumper to help me. And again, this is the double binding. I'm scared I'm going to break the hump jumper. <laughs> no, nope, it did its job. And that's it, we're back to the beginning. Now I need to go and check the other side, make sure everything looks good. Caught it all fantastic. That's what it looks like before we turn it. And now we get to turn it out. Oh, I'm nervous. Use my flute cleaner to turn those out, those edge, those sides. Okay, I've missed a bit just there. Come back in because I've got a bit here that I've missed so I just need to come back in just here in this corner right where that those two layers meet So I'm just going to have to come back in here and just stitch closer to the seam. So I'm just going to come in a little bit. Hopefully that's enough to have caught that side.
just have to come back in at the top here as well because it's just not caught it enough. I'll just check the other bits first. Oh, they caught it that time. So it's just that I didn't get close enough. But that is a good thing about binding is you can just go back in as you need to. Oh, much better. Okay, we are finished the exterior. We're finished it. I just need to do the strap. Let's do the strap. I'm just going to go up the centre bar, over the centre bar, just like so. And I'm going to secure that with a couple of stitches. Actually, I'm going to fold in my end and then fold it over again on itself and stitch that down. It's going to avoid it unraveling. So I'm just going to do two parallel lines. There. I'm going to put one of my swivel hooks on I'm going to bring bring the end of my strap up the slider back down And then I'm going to get the other end of my slider and slide that on. And again, I'm going to fold the end over back on itself and I'm going to sew two parallel lines. And then we we'll clip our sides on. And it's ready to go. And there we have it. Oh, I didn't think it would fit me, but it does. That's what it looks like on top zipper you got a front zipper and there we have it our medium size B hip bag so let's go over it we've got our front zipper pocket here which is a great size our main zipper pocket and on the back side fold that back on this side we've got three slip pockets or three divider pockets which 
the more pockets the better I say then on the back side we've got another zipper pocket which is a really big size then we've got another slip pocket here and then we have our card slots on the back wall our card slots there and then on the back we have another zipper pocket because you can never have too many zipper pockets and our base the base of our bag our side wings and our strap I am really impressed with how this turned out the pattern was so very well written. The instructions were so easy to follow. There were some issues that I had, but they were all because I didn't read the pattern before I went ahead and did the step. So I had to unpick stuff. Again, that's on me. So my recommendations are if you are sewing on a domestic, be very mindful about what textiles you're using because there are a couple of seams in here that do get really really thick and bulky and especially when you're adding in your um your binding so just be very mindful maybe don't use the thick waterproof canvas that I used but look at how cute it looks though um Overall, I am so impressed with how this turned out. I think it looks amazing and I absolutely love all of the elements of this. Um, I love my tags that I got from Brimax. Absolutely amazing considering that you set them with rivets and we all know how I am with rivets. I'm certainly going to be making more sophisticated patterns. I did buy two more that I'm going to test or that I'm going to make but... I think that if if your customers love these hip bags, they are absolutely going to love this. And again, this is the medium and I'm really impressed with how it turned out. So thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.